I love that line. That, that's yes. It's so good. It's absurdly awesome. I just want to take a ride in the rig. Right. I'm not even asking right. for a free drink. Montreal, Washington on the return for the Chiefs. Across the 20 and brought down at the 28-yard line. Ian Book, the new quarterback for the Chiefs. Played his college football at Notre Dame in the preseason. 10 of 13. He's in his third year now in the National Football League. 26 years of age. Spent time with the Saints, the Eagles, the Patriots, and now the Chiefs. Chris Oladokun is done for the night. He finished 9 of 16 for 66 yards. Lewis Rezam at the ball carrier. He's a pretty good size guy, Rezam. It's 6'2, 209 pounds, 23 years of age. We had a great talk with him this week, and I, and I was like, why was this the time, right? And he said, well, my contract was coming up, and uh, I knew if there was an opportunity, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the international players' uh, opportunity comes up, and, and you know, it's been a crazy eight months because this was all the end of December and into, into January. Uh, and next thing you know, he's training. And as you said earlier in the game, he, he grew up watching the game with his dad and felt this was the time to give it a go and move to Florida and IMG for a few months. And that's where a few teams grab their attention as we look at his family right there. They all had the number nine jersey on, family looking sharp. Let's see if he can make a play or two here on this drive. And he's out there at receiver for the moment. I got a feeling he might come back to the backfield. And he will. Third and eight. Book. Going to step up. And he'll be brought down. So a three and out for the Chiefs. Malori. Makes the play. Let's re it. Remains on the field for special teams. Greg Stroman Jr., 27, hoping for a chance at a return for the Bears. A huge punt from Liza. Wow. Well, and that's the hang time that they need from him. You can have the big punts, but you got to have the hang time, and that time he did, allowing coverage to get down there. 57-yard punt, only four yards on the return. There is a flag down on the near sideline at the 21-yard line. Let's see what that's all about. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Player ran out of bounds and stayed out of bounds. Kicking team number 28. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Timeout. All right, timeout on the field. Arise that now in Mexico. Ahorita damos ahí algunos datos de unos videos que subieron haciendo sentadí y paint press. Y aquí otra vez va el mismo con el balón, ya cruzó la yarda 20, se está escapando hasta la yarda 10 y vamos a ver qué dice el oficial. Thor, como la apodaban. Bayless Jones Jr., the ball carrier, he's got a lot of work tonight for the Bears. Four minutes and counting now. Glad you're with us at GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium, that guy Carson Steele. He's been the, he was the man tonight. He was the man in Jacksonville. It's a preseason star who's going to make the team. Yeah, definitely. And the man on the last play was Owen Carney. What a great job getting rid of his blocker and making that tackle right near the line of scrimmage. Excellent job by him. Reed dumps it down. It's Jones with it. And he's going to be a little bit shy of the first down. Gain of seven on the play. Cam Jones out there working hard, the second year man. Last 
sure they had that game against the Chargers that was fairly meaningless in terms of what was going to happen for playoff positioning. And Cam Jones in that game had a team-high 12 tackles. Gave a chance for a lot of players to play a starter's role. It's Jones. No, it's Reed. Keeps it. He spins. Falls forward. I think he's just shy. We got a pretty good look at it from our vantage point right here. I think it's going to bring up fourth and inches. Well, Dickerson comes down the line. You see 93 there. He's going right after the ball carrier, and that's the reason why the QB pulls it. He tries to spin. Reed does and pick up the first down, but he's short. As they throw the challenge flag to challenge this spot. Mahomes said, what happened? Wondering what's going on. As we say, we got a new ref here in the second half, Jonah Monroe. Move from back judge to ref at halftime. Chicago is challenging the, the spot of the run. Time out. And look, it's a whole new role, right? Yes. You, you're you used to being the back judge and then having to articulate to the audience what is happening and trying to explain to everyone. So he will go over and take a look. Let's see the spot here. So Reed pulls it. Let's see, when he gets a spin. Well, it's where the ball is when his backside hits the ground. So that's what you have to. It's not where he extends it to. It's right. That's the first part to hit the ground. Yeah, I mean, the ball seems like it may have been right there. Now, again, that. What we put on the field there, that, that's not the actual line. Oftentimes it's very close to it, but technology isn't perfect. On that replay, it, it appears, it appears that it's at the 44 yard line. Which would get them which the first down. Which would get them right yeah. to the first down, but. So right there is where it hits, and it's in his left arm when he spins. Yep. So I think it's a I think this challenge may change the call here. Now Bozeman took a pretty good hit right there at the end of the play. One thing to keep in mind, one there has been like a rule adjustment now. If a coach is successful on one of his first two challenges, he will get an extra one this year. So that, that's a significant rule change. So if if Eberflus is successful here, he'd still have two challenges remaining. Great point, Ari, as we're getting close to the regular season. There's there's some rule adjustments, some rule emphasis, right? Where, they, where yep. there's certain rules that have been in place that they want to emphasize year in and year out. And After review, the ruling on the field stands fourth down. Well, just like we didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just to, us, it, to us, it seemed pretty clear. The ball was in his left hand when his backside hit the ground. It appeared to be at the, the 44, but... For the Chiefs, they get an opportunity here on fourth down to, to try and get a stop. All right, fourth down for the Bears. Will they run a player just trying to get the Chiefs to jump? Jones is the running back. And Austin Reed, they're trying to push the pile. Well, you have to remember there's no line judge on the far side of the field by the Bears because they've had to rotate, right? They're implementing like an official got hurt, and so now they have six instead of seven. So when they spot the ball, there's only one line judge that's spotting the ball. Who, who would have spotted that one would have been on the other yes. side. They did give him the first down based on... Not by much. Right. So the camera angle we're at is the only line judge. You can see at the top of the picture, there's no line judge on the far side. 
So if anything to that side of the field, it's going to be hard to see. First and ten. Reed, the throw on play action. He completes it. Tyler Scott gets in to Chiefs territory. 15 yards on the play. Chiefs that time bite up on the who is that Watson that's down? Yeah, there's Looks a almost Chiefs like player. a cramp. Yeah, Jalen Watson. He's been out there a lot tonight. Third year man out of Washington State has played a lot of snaps for the Chiefs. Chiefs football is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Watch your Chiefs this season on the NFL. Good news, Jalen Watson able to walk off on his own. First and 10 coming up for the Bears. Play action, Reed. Gets it to Tommy Sweeney, who had the last touchdown for Chicago. He stopped at the 39-yard line. Let's check in with Matt. Hey, guys. Just checking in regarding Douglas Coleman the third, who left earlier with that scary injury. There's no update as of now from the Bears, but I'll keep you posted if I hear anything. Thanks, Matt. Certainly a lot of concerned people on both sidelines. Douglas Coleman the third went down. Scary moment. We wish him all the very best. It's Jones again. Nice cutback. Jones inside the 25. Inside the 20. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown Bears. 39 yards for Vilas Jones Jr., the third year man out of Tennessee. Well, you see just a sweep to the outside. You got a couple. Lineman out in front. He's able to make a good cut. Nobody even touches him. The entire play and over pursuit on the front side and then with the cutback. Santos on for the extra point. And the kick is on the way and it is good. The Bears to the West Coast. San Francisco. And Vegas. So yeah, no, uh, not an easy start to the schedule. And, and we touched on this earlier in the preseason. The fact that they're just not going to get into a normal routine. They're such a high profile team. It's not like they're going to play Sunday afternoon at the exact same time. They're going to play on a lot of different days of the week and it will, they won't have the luxury of getting into the same routine every week. Uh, they're on every day of the week except Tuesday. Amazing. <laughs> this season, which is crazy. Lewis Rezamet on the return. And that's a nice return across the 35-yard line. Well, rugby players looking more and more comfortable out here. That section of fans, including his family, had to be excited about that. Let's see what the Chiefs offense can do. Well, they got to get something going, yep. right? It's the, 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 only, the only drive they had was the, the Carson Steele drive. Now trying to get some kind of rhythm, get some first downs, get a little tempo going. First and ten, Ian Book, the quarterback in the shotgun, re it to his left. Play action, Book with time. Now he's going to dump it to re it, and the throw was short. Still 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, the number one thing you want in this game is to come out of it healthy. Both teams have had guys taken off the field because of injuries, so that's that's not a good thing, but neither team has, has played very many starters trying to be as healthy as possible for the opener. Now some of these young players getting the experience they'll need here as this third quarter wraps up heading into the fourth quarter. Keep it on the ground, re it. Tries to navigate traffic, not much doing there. Maybe yard and a half or two. I kind of like.
like to see Reese Emmett out in some space exactly. if they can find a way to get it to him. Well, that will do it for the third quarter. Those fans up there. Where is Matt McBone? Let's go to Matt McBone. Matt, what do you have for us? Hey, guys, down here with linebacker Drew Tranquil. And Drew, last year, just a one-year deal for you. Came back to Kansas City though on a multi-year contract. Why did you want to come back? Well, my family and I loved it here. We knew that very quickly into last year. Um, as a dad of three kids and a married man, you don't want to move your family all around. And so uh, I came here last year with the intent uh, to make this place home, and I'm happy it, it worked out. One thing you and Spags have talked about all offseason is demand better. This defense was so good last year, but you want to be better. How do you achieve that this year, and why is it so important to you? Well, there's constantly ways to get better. I mean, you look at the rush average last year. You look at our takeaway margin. Uh, there's rooms to, room to improve all over the place, um, and that's what we're doing. We talk about chasing greatness um, each and every day in our room, and we think there's still a lot of room to get better this year. A lot of young players on this defense that just continue to ascend. It seems like what can you say about the young players on this defense that have made it so good? <laughs> I mean, you see you see guys like Jaden Hicks flying around tonight. Chris Roland Wallace. I mean, these guys are making plays all over the field. It is a preseason game, but these guys are making their making their game known, putting it out there on tape um, and they're doing it in practice, too. Um, so we got a lot of young guys we're excited about and, and we're going to need this year. I know you of all people love playing at GEJ Field at Arrowhead Stadium. I remember the first day that you were here touring the stadium. You said how excited you were to be here. What's opening night going to be like here in a few weeks? Well, it's a cool environment tonight because it's 7:20, the exact same time we're going to be playing the Ravens in a couple weeks. And uh, anytime you get out here, the Chiefs Kingdom is rocking. Uh, this city is great. Our fans show up regardless if it's a preseason game or a season opener. Uh, but I expect it to be electric. It's going to be fun. And the fans are all talking about three Pete. I know internally you guys aren't talking about that. It's just the next day. How do you make sure you achieve your goals though this season? I'll say it's what coach Reed's been saying which is the formula and I think um, there are a lot there are a lot of great players here. Uh, there's a lot of great coaches uh, personnel folks um, people up in the organization that have been doing it for a long time and have found a formula for success um, and we know that you can't take any shortcuts. You got to do each step. Um, one of those steps is training camp in the preseason and battling through that, getting yourself ready for a long season. But uh, it's going to be a challenge. It's hard to win in the NFL. It's hard to win in the NFL, uh, but we're ready for it. Drew, good luck this season. We appreciate you. Thanks so much. Go Chiefs. All right. Thank you very much, Drew, and thank you to Matt. And, you know, when you look back at last year, we talked with Brett Veach earlier in the game, getting Drew Tranquil on, on a one-year deal last year was a really impactful free agent signing for the team. Oh, it was very big. You know, when, when you're trying to figure out you know who you guys in the middle are going to be and and uh, he came in and was a was a force and, and that's why they signed him to a multi-year extension you know both uh, both he and Willie Gay were up Willie Gay moved on in free agency and they resigned Drew Tranquil and, and then Steve Spagnuolo said that as well you know stop the run and get more turnovers and and uh, Drew just echoed that in his interview with Matt so I know they're fired up and ready for the season to get here. And Book was just able to get that handoff and broken tackle there. Deontay Ingram, good job running the football. Well, what's scary for the rest of the league, Trent, is Patrick Mahomes is very honest with us when he talked to us. You know, it was a bit of a grind for the offense. He didn't seem like he had as much fun last year, at least until the playoffs. The team last year was minus 11 in turnover margin, turnover margin tied for 28th, and yet they still won the Super Bowl. If the Chiefs, you got to figure those numbers are going to improve this year, and this team should be a better team than it was a year ago. Yeah, and that's that is scary. Uh, you know, when you consider the offense was right in the middle of the pack, uh, under 22 yards per game, right at 15 in uh, in points per game, and and that's something that uh, that Patrick mentioned he wasn't happy with. As Ian Book gets an opportunity to get out in some space and pick up another first down, or get close to another first down. Let's see where they where they mark him out of bounds. It's, Gain a nine on the play for Book. Well, we were talking about Drew Tranquil, who played at Notre Dame. Ian Book, of course, also a member of the Fighting Irish. Second and a yard here. It's Ingram, and Ingram gets it inside the 10, where it'll be first and goal for the Chiefs. Ingram looking sharp on this drive. Get some opportunity. Good job up front. That's good hard running there. 
was on the practice squad for a bunch of the season last year. He was active for one game. Great job by Hanson there, getting the initial block to push down and then getting up to the linebacker. Keontae Ingram started his career in Texas, finished it at USC. He's got the football, and Ingram gets it down close to the seven-yard line, gain a two on the play. And you know how tough it is to make a team in the National Football League. And I always think it's really important, these moments in the fourth quarter of the final preseason game. Some of these guys, this may be the peak of their football career, making a play in the fourth quarter of this game, and maybe then giving themselves a chance to land with another team. But that these moments are huge for these guys out there. Well, and that's the thing. You know, you work all training camp. You work all offseason. Obviously, you've had an entire college career. Some of these guys have been on practice squads for a couple years. And just getting an opportunity here to get yourself on tape. Maybe someone else around the league, if Powell gets it, gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Nice quick throw by Book with an accurate throw. Powell. Paul's making an argument to make the team, right? He's a special teams guy, had a big play last week. Another touchdown here now, so it's tough. I mean, keep six receivers, seven receivers. Who's good, who are going to be the guys? And Powell's been around for a while. This is his fourth preseason with the Chiefs. Knew exactly what he wanted to do once he got the football. Gets it just into the end zone. Well, and we were talking about how important this is. And, and, you know, whether or not he's on this roster, with what he's done the last couple of weeks, it's standing out on tape. So a team that is wide receiver needy, you know, it may have an opportunity there. Harrison Butker. But it's going to be hard if they.